What's going on guys? So today is a very exciting day for me because I am on my way to my buddy's house, the guy that does the welding for me, to pick up something that he made that is super, super awesome and I'm super giddy about it, really excited. Hang tight, I'll be right back. So we're back. I am super excited because of what you are looking at right here. This is the new custom made trenching blade for the tractor. Four inches wide from the outside. The inside is about three inches wide. This is insane. Look at that, three eighths inch plate steel all the way around. This right here is half inch thick complete with the quick connect for the uh, the John Deere bucket. This is courtesy of my uh, my old neighbor, the welder, the one who does fantastic work. Check this out. So this is welded right here. Look how smooth that is. And I'll show you on the inside so you can see. Well, maybe you can see. Let's see if I can flip this up. And fold it back. There you go, now you can see the uh, the bead completely smooth on the outside. That is just absolutely insane. 3 8 inch thick plate, 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 all the way around. From here to here is about 20 inches. So from here to here is about four, so it's 24 inches total. And uh, the reason why I wanted it this specific size was for typical trenching of like conduit and things like that, you wanna get about 18 inches in the ground. So this gives me the ability to do that and it tapers out right here, so it also gives me the ability to have it a little bit wider at the top just to open up the hole a bit. But yeah, they make buckets like these that you can buy. They're called micro-trenching buckets, I believe. But this specific one um, is kind of special because it's made to fit a John Deere 50G or 60G mini excavator, and the company that actually makes the micro buckets, at least according to their website, does not have one for the Quick Connect on my John Deere. Actually, I don't even know if I saw one for any of the John Deeres this size, whether it had a Quick Connect or not. So, yeah, it was important for me to get what I was looking for because what's the point of having a tool like this if you can't use it for the different things you really want to use it for? So the purpose of this is gonna be a very convenient way to run PVC or electrical lines underground to move you know, utilities to certain parts of the property that I need it. Because right now, in order to get water out to the RV, I have a garden hose running from the Goodwill water out to the side of the RV and uh, you know, it's just not convenient. The water gets all stagnant and nasty inside of that hose. It's sitting out, it's getting really, really hot. Whereas the bad water from the bad well right here, which we use for irrigation, well, as you can see, got a big old piece of hose running way back to it. And I'd like to change all of that out to PVC and actually trench it underground. I could use my 12 inch trenching bucket, which is sitting right over there. The problem is, is I don't need a 12 inch wide hole. And this is less than half the width of that plus it's kind of designed perfectly to cut into the ground the way I need it, so it's not going to disturb the ground nearly as much as that other bucket will. So this is going to be really cool, and we're going to install it on the front of the excavator so I can uh, see how it works. Now, I'm under no illusion that this is not going to be compatible with the thumb. Well, it might actually be because the thumb will actually close around the outside of it, so that might work. So we'll see how the thumb works with it. But um, yeah, whenever we're using this, there's really no major reason to use the thumb at that moment. What, we may find that uh, to be not true though. We may end up using it in conjunction with the thumb, using it to break things, who knows. But it is certainly built very well. Check out the welds. Very, very cool. Uh, he offered to powder coat it, but I kind of opted against it because I want it to be easily repaired if I need to repair it. If I get a big gouge in it, I want to be able to sand it down and spray paint it as opposed to needing to remove all of the powder coating and uh, reapply it. And my gut tells me that tractor buckets and things like that are painted and not powder coated. I could be wrong, but because of you know how they're used, I would imagine it would make more sense to paint it versus powder coat because you're just gonna knock the powder coating off of it. The one thing that people may ask is why I didn't put a carbide tooth or something here on the very front of it. And, you know, again, we just want to do as minimal disturbing of the ground as possible. We may end up doing something here, maybe drilling a hole right here to be able to mount a tooth to it, just because this right here could be a, a definite wear point. 
Um, but I don't think we're gonna deal with that much. I don't think that's gonna be much of an issue. If it becomes one, we may just reinforce this and add something to it. But what do you guys think? What do you think of the uh, build quality, the construction of this thing? Super, super heavy, super robust. Absolutely looks like it's gonna be able to accomplish what, what I'm trying to do with it. And we'll, we'll play around with it out here and we'll see how it works. But yeah, let's get this thing installed on the front of the uh, mini excavator. Huge shout out to my neighbor for building this for me. These wings right here, I purchased off of eBay actually. So I supplied the Quick Connect little plates here. You can buy them on eBay for like 60, 70 bucks or they're relatively affordable. So he built essentially everything that's attached to them and then he attached them to the actual wings. So we're gonna get it installed on the tractor and see how it performs. So check that out. Got it mounted in place. The quick connect worked perfectly. All bolted up. Man, that looks menacing. I think I'm gonna call it the fang. That is super cool. But we're gonna see how functional it is. Let's get in the tractor and test it out. Okay, so this is what it looks like. Let me curl it in for you. That's as far as it curls in. I'm gonna bring the thumb down so we can see what it looks like. Okay, so you're not gonna really wanna use the thumb with it when it's up because it might bind a little bit, but yeah, you can uh, you can use the thumb. You just gotta be real careful how you use the thumb. And for something like this, again, it's not really designed to use with a thumb. But, it, but then again, we kinda designed it ourselves, so. He took a drawing that I gave him and he pretty much made exactly the uh, fabricated reality of that drawing. Let's see here. Check that out. You're not scooping a lot, but it's very strategic how this works. So I'm gonna go ahead and scoop right here so you guys get an idea. take a look at what we've done okay 
check this out. It's about a foot deep. I don't know if you can tell from the video. It's only about five inches wide. Again, imagine if we were using that. That thing's 12 inches wide. This thing is four inches wide. It's a little bit wider only because scrubbing the wall a little bit. That is super cool. I mean, and you have such little tear out. There's such a little dirt that you're actually having to remove. So if you're gonna backfill it, I mean, it's so simple to do it. And the other cool thing about this is I can drive over this with a vehicle. I could drive over it with the tractor. I don't have to worry about making a trench so wide that it prevents me from being able to drive over it without possibly falling into it. You can throw just about anything you need in there. That is super cool. And it works so dang well. Let's take a look at the actual blade. You can see some uh, paints coming off of it, but kind of expected to, especially on this front cutting edge. The rest of the bucket looks really good. That is absolutely freaking awesome. I honestly don't know if I could have asked for anything better than that. That is super cool. You know, there's a lot of folks that have started watching the channel because of the, you know, the tractor stuff, the excavator stuff. I would love to know what you guys think about this, especially if you work in utilities and you're having to trench small little holes like this, especially for things like fiber optics and stuff like that. What do you think of this bucket? I told him he needs to keep the schematics to this all kind of memorized because this is something I think a lot of industries here in the U.S. could use, especially if they have a John Deere mini excavator and they can't buy one of these from the companies that already make something similar. But that is super cool. I mean, to give you an idea, when we were running that front uh, gate opener, I don't know if you guys recall in the video, we trenched it by hand. And it took us a long time and we were beat. I mean, we were completely spent and we were only going six inches underground. So we didn't probably even get to the full six inches in some areas and then backfilling it was just an absolute nightmare. Something like this is gonna make short work of running PVC pipes, running other types of conduit underground. And it's the perfect depth, right? If I wanna go all the way to the top here, I'm at about 24 inches. If I wanna go right here, I'm at 20 inches, which is still a couple inches below the 18 inches that you typically wanna be at. That is absolutely amazing, and I really, really appreciate his hard work in putting something together like this for me. Like I said, I paid him for it. I didn't ask any of this to be free, and quite frankly, I always pay him more than what he asks me for. So, you know, even though he tells me how much he wants to charge me, I, I always end up paying him a lot more than that because I respect the work he does, and I want him to know how much I appreciate it, especially being a, a retired veteran, you know, a veteran of uh, the U.S. Army, him and his wife. They've served our country well, and they deserve to... Uh, make a good living after everything's said and done anyways guys uh super super cool let me know in the description what you guys think especially if you do any type of trenching if you do any type of utility work if you do any type of plumbing and a mini excavator is in your fleet of tools that you use how do you typically do it do you stick with your 12 inch bucket is that kind of your go-to for trenching you know if you're running pool lines if you're running electrical lines things like that or is this something that that you could see helping you now i know some folks might say extend this part so it's longer so you can trench deeper before making contact with the gussets. But for me, this is what I needed. This is all I needed. It's built so dang well. It's so awesome to, to see this product. And you know, it's been in the works now for over a week and uh, actually a couple of weeks now. And he took this task on as a really cool way to uh, differentiate some of the stuff he does from barbecue pits and stuff like that to this kind of stuff. Very, very happy with it though. So uh, just definitely gonna let him know that I'm thrilled to death. Guys, if you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon. I'm going to keep playing with my new toy.